how are we this morning i hope you are all well i have um a fun project to show you this morning uh made with crystals actually and i've called it um my Maisie bracelet because i have a cat Maisie, and when i was working on this the other day she's normally not interested at in what i'm doing at the dining room table but she has a scratching post which sort of sits here and while i was making it she just spent the whole time staring of what I was doing. Every time I looked down, she was staring at it. So it was quite disconcerting. <laughs> you know, when you know when someone's staring at you, it feels a little bit odd, doesn't it? Even more so when it's a cat. So, so um, uh, yeah, I've named this one after her, in her honour, because um, she liked it so much. <laughs> so so um, let's just say good morning very quickly. I can see I've got a lot of people online already. Hello, everybody. Uh, so we've got Alison and Ruth and Lucy and Sandra and Joe and Edward. Hi, Edward and Linda and Camille and Katrina and Alison and Lorna and Anne and Amelia and Gillian and Jean. And I think that's Snay, uh, Helen and Sheila. So good morning, everybody. Right. Let's have a look at the Maisie uh, bracelet. So let's just show you what my cat was so obsessed with um this morning so there we go or yesterday rather actually when did i do this monday night yesterday was tuesday so this is what we're going to be playing with all right so it's a nice simple crystal morning angela crystal project um easy to do uh, especially for beginners you know if you've not done something be like this before then hopefully you're going to have a good time uh, now crystals i think they add that nice little bit of bling and i must admit i do like a magnetized toggle these are the toggles here and these have actually got four little rings on them which enables us easily to create this pattern because we can have four threads and they can come in and they can go out but it finishes flat. It finishes flush. Now you can do this same pattern with just a normal toggle bead. But I like the way that this sort of, it's not going to twist because we've got that wonderful flat magnetic toggle. And what I also like about a magnetic toggle is it's easy to put on. I find lobster claws on bracelets, you know, when you're trying to get your hand under there like that, trying to get a toggle in place. Sorry, a lobster claw in place. It can be a bit tricky. But these are um, uh, four ringed. So we've got four of them. You do need to use an even number of, of gaps. Let me just find this one here. This is the one I'm going to be using today. I've already attached two pieces of wire to it for speed. But you can see you've got those four there and you've got those four on that side as well. <coughs> excuse me i've got such a tickle at the moment i've been talking constantly for days so i've got my i've got my lemonade in here so it is honestly just lemonade hmm. <coughs> to keep the old uh, whistle wet as they say so this is the project that we're going to be working on um and uh simon has put a load of stuff up for us on the page so that we can have a look at the crystals and the toggles and stuff like that so um diane says i have trouble taking off and putting on those clasps yes they can be they can be tricky um now when you're working if you're talking about lobster claws and actually physically taking them off your wrists i do find them difficult i like a magnetic clasp on a necklace so let's see if I've got some handy in my in my little findings box in here. I have to show you, if you've not seen it before, this is my findings box. Purple glitter. And in there, that's where I keep all of my, my findings and my bits and pieces. Obviously, being a beader, um, you will all understand that your stash doesn't all fit in one place, does it? So um, I do have one just with my, with my, um, my findings in it. So I like these magnetic clasps if i can open the box and let's just look at these so these are available on the website and they're quite strong magnets and they're really useful for necklaces 
but I find for bracelets, because I'm such a clumsy clot, I often walk through doors and catch my bracelet on things. So those I don't find um, suitable for keeping bracelets on me. So what I like about this one is not only are they magnetic, but they slide inside each other. So pulling them apart, if I catch that somewhere, it's not going to, it's not actually going to fall off. So uh, good morning, Julie off to walk the dog. We'll see you later. We will still be here. You can come back and watch us at any time. So, so don't worry. So let's just go and have a look at the uh, website. So this is what we've got in our little selection pot today. If I just go back one, you'll see that's the Maisie bracelet here. That's what we're actually going to be looking at today. And is it the, it's the 2nd of December already? Isn't that slightly disconcerting? Um, slightly disconcerting that already we're in the 2nd of December. My goodness. Carol says, I agree, I lost a bracelet with a magnetic clasp. But yeah, so that's why I like those toggles because they actually have to physically slide out, but they're magnetic, so they clip in really well, really easily. So uh, in the Maisie bracelet here, now this is just the selection of colours that I have used. And I have used... Um, Diane says, it's the sliding ones I have problems taking and putting off, uh, putting on. I have to use my teeth. Okay. Well, <laughs> there's no answer to that, is there, Diane? <laughs> Bless you. It's horses for courses, really. Um, so, uh, I have used, in the two bracelets, first of all, on both samples, I'll, we'll have a look at them again in a second, but on both samples, I've used the Crystal Rondelles, the 2 by 3 millimeters, the little ditty ones here, and it's available in lots of colours. Uh, morning, Patricia, it's available in lots of different colours. So, we've got up here, just for you to look at, we've got the silver plate, and we've got the red so I have used the silver plate in the dark one and obviously the red one in the red one. Then we've got two different sizes of round crystals. I use one in each bracelet. So um, I've used six millimeter and eight millimeter and we'll have a look in a second so that you can see the difference. Then we've got those sliding magnetic clasps. Um, we've got them, uh, we've got rhodium and silver plated, again, available in lots of different colors. I've used Tiger Tail, so we've put that up there, and then these brilliant Toho Cubes. So there we've got the um, magnetic, uh, sorry, metallic hematite ones and the silver line crystals, but they do come in a myriad of different colours. So it's worth taking a look um, at those uh, in different colourways as well. So let's go back to the hands. So we can look at the two different bracelets. So you can see they're slightly different. Oh, they're quite magnetic. Look, they're clipped. <laughs> so um, they are slightly different sizes. So the red ones, I have used the larger eight millimeter crystals. And in this one, I've used the slightly smaller six millimeter. So you can see it does make a little bit of a difference in the sizes when we put them together. But they're still equally twinkly, equally sparkly and um, equally easy to do. So we don't need to worry about counting or anything like that. So let's pop them over there. So my supplies for this one, I have some of the red 2 by 3s So these little here, I've got a, str a strand of those. Now, um, there's 200 on a strand and I used... I used it in this bracelet. So this is the strand I used. So let's put it against the original strand. and You can see how much I've actually used. Probably about, I don't know, about an eighth of it. So probably about three inches worth. So these will go a long way. Okay, a lot of bracelets. Um, Jodie, no kit sale for today's Maisie bracelet. Um, no, they've put the the bits up there. You can see we, they're quite uh, reasonably priced already. So, and you can choose different colours as well. So it's really up to you which colourway you go for. Um, 
but all the all the all the stuff is up there on the on the page so then i've got my toho cubes now oh, i love these as soon as i saw these i knew i wanted to play with the with the cubes look at those aren't they cute and again they go quite a long way then i've got tiger tail to do this with i did have a look to see if i could do it with fire line but it's it's very difficult very difficult to keep um it, um to put clasps on like this with fire line because it just doesn't hold with your crimp beads so out of my stash i've also got my crimp beads and my crimp bead covers Katrina says, cats love anything that move or sparkles. We've five cats and they're always after my chains when I'm creating. Yes, exactly. I think that's what it was. It was the twinkles um, as I was moving things. She was just staring at them. But it was just weird because it was so intense. <laughs> so she's usually not bothered. Right, so I have cut some pieces of my wire. Um, I've cut them 10 inches long. Now, my actual bracelet, um, for me, because I've got the only part of me that's tiny is my wrists and my ankles. Um, so mine um, are seven inches. My bracelets are seven inches long to fit me. But you want a couple of extra inches because it helps when you're trying to put these clasps on the end. And it also helps if you can trim them down, the, the wires down. So always be a little bit more generous with your your pieces that you think you want to do now attaching these as well i have learned over the last few days of making these samples it's better to work from the middle and outwards okay and put your crimp bead on and your crimp cover before you move to the next one okay hang on let's just let's see if i can bring that in the focus in on that a little bit Right, so I've done that one and that one, and then I'm gonna do that one and that one because it's quite tricky. Once you, if you just do all the crimp beads together and then try and put the crimp covers on, it's absolutely tiny um, to get into. So let me just grab a crimp cover. So Camille says I'm the same, slim wrist and ankles, <laughs> nowhere else. Right, so let's pop that on there, and then I'm going to pop that through. Fold it over. And then I'm going to bring that crimp bead back up. Ooh. It's always trickier to do this when you're trying to film it than when you do it at home, which is why I've already done two this morning. Right, so slide that on. Come on, on you go. I've also just put hand cream on, which was a silly move. Because now everything is slipping in my fingers. So, let's take that in. Get it as close as I can. And pinch. All right. So now I'm going to get my crimp cover. So here's my crimp cover. I do actually, I know it's terrible, but I take my spectacles off to do these very tiny bits. It's very close in work. So I can't actually, I won't actually be able to see my screen now. So. This is a lot easier when you haven't got people watching, I have to say. That's slightly wider. It always helps if you've got the right tools as well. There we go. Clasp that round. And there we go. We're just going to pinch that and I'm going to pinch it from the other side because I want that to, cl to close up nicely. Right, so there we are. There's my nice crimp bead. Let me just check you're still in focus on my screen. There we go. 
So, and then I'm going to do the final one, which I've just got to cut. So I cut three and then I thought I should do the other one in a moment. So 10 inches long, cut that off, pop my crimp. bead on there and then the last one's going to go through fold it over and in where's my right get my little pliers and trim that extra bit off there. I'm trying to get them even all the way along. Uh, Camille says use a bit longer thread. Yes. <laughs> yes, definitely there Camille. Right, and then my other crimp bead. Final bead, crimp cover, wrap that around. Right, so here we go. This is our first our bit of toggle attached. Let's just squeeze that side as well. So it's nice. Because what you don't want is those little crimp beads, they, they look unsightly. They are quite ugly to look at, but they also can be quite scratchy on your skin. So I don't like to have them at the end of my bracelet because when I'm wearing it, it'll it'll scratch like that and be uncomfortable. Okie dokie. So there's our first little bit there. Just move those out of the way. I don't want to lose them. Or knock them because we know what happens when we're not finding. So don't move them everywhere. I've also got something in my eye. Excuse me. <laughs> I just made one of those mornings this morning. All right. Uh, morning, Francis. What's the normal prep time on this bracelet? One ones you made for demo. Um, I spent an evening making these. So probably about three hours, but I was designing as I went. So, um, you know, once I made the first one, I unpicked it quite a few times. It's very hard to know, but I think once you get going, um, it's not going to take you very long at all to make these uh, once you get your pattern running. So I'm going to get some of my pieces ready in a little pile. But yes, I did it quite a few times because I knew roughly what I wanted, but it took me a few goes to actually get um, the effect I was after. So, but um, I think I watched, I watched two movies while I was doing it, so that would give you a bit of an idea. I had a table in my living room and I was sitting there watching a Marvel, a Marvel movie and then The Matrix, as you do. So those are my three sort of types of beads that I am using. There we go. So I've got my Toho. I've got these are the eight millimeter crystals and these are the two by three little crystal rondelles. So uh, yes, the Lorna, the other end is trickier when you're coming in to finish it at the other end. But with a little bit of patience, it is, it is doable. So what we're going to do first of all is on each of these, we're going to start off on each of our four strands. We're going to um, start off with a little rondelle. So each of my four pieces, I'm just going to spread them out like this. Because the first time I tried to do it without the little tiny crystals, and nothing actually fit it was quite frustrating so you just kind of keep going until you get something that looks like what you're trying to work on but also so that it lies flat 
because I don't like, um, I wouldn't want one of these to be twisting on my hand. Jodie says, great design and named bracelet. Inspiration is key to creating sometimes. It is, yes, because I knew I wanted to make something sort of crystal. An excuse to use some of my lovely crystals. Right, so we slide those down to the end. All right, and get those positioned. And then after that, we're going to separate those first two and these next two. And I'm going to put a Toho cube on one and then a Toho cube on the other. All right, and then push them down. So there's our beginning. You see, it's starting to take shape. Uh, Camille says Christmas movies are my favourite. So I, I guessed, Lorna, that you did mean bracelet rather than brave leg. <laughs> I'm just going to trim all of those to the same length now. There we go. Uh, so the next one, this is a little bit fiddly because I've got to get four of these through my first... No, I've not got to get two of these. Hang on, let's keep them separate. Two of these through another rondelle because I'm separating them into pairs. Uh, Jodie says shiny things are great for Christmas and events. Oh, they definitely are because if you're doing a jewellery stand... I think they always attract quite a lot of attention when you've got very shiny things. Oh, I've just dropped the one off the other end. Crystals always attract attention, especially if you've got good lighting because they glint off them. Right, so there we go. So, and now we're just going to keep repeating this pattern. All right, so now all four, so I've got, I've got four rondelles and I've got two Toho, two Toho, and then we go through a single Toho. All four pieces. Like that. Uh, Sue is late because she's been stamping the inside of Christmas cards. Oh, yeah, Lorna, autocorrect. The other day I was talking about free motion quilting on Facebook and it came up as Freemason quilting. So I had some strange comments after that one. So we've come into a single Toho. Now we need to split out again. So it doesn't really matter when you come out. I might have naturally split into two pairs, but it doesn't matter if one of those and one of those goes together. It doesn't mean it's just as long as you've just got two of them. So now we're going to go through the rondelle. Now they are quite tiny, but you are only popping two wires through it. There we go. Slide those down. And now we're going to go into our two crystals. OK, this is this is what basically why I introduced the rondelles to these, because if I went from the Toho straight into the crystal, it was twisting. I needed um, a little bit of separation between the two. Uh, but also once I'd done it, I, I was it was a happy accident. I liked it so, so much better. So actually, I'm going to take one of those off because I'm going to show you what I found easier to do. So when I'm coming now and I need to split these, don't worry if they sort of come off a bit like that. You know, they're no longer completely straight because once you finish, you just pull them tight and they will sort of line up like that. But what's easier to do is to do this side of that section of this repeat. So in that case, I go big crystal, rondelle, Toho, Rondell, Big Crystal, Rondell. So basically between every 
big thing. I've got a Rondell, so I've got a Rondell, Crystal, Rondell, uh, Toho, Rondell, Crystal, Rondell. All right. Uh, that's a nice triangle, old reverse and repeat to get a diamond shape. If you say so, Margaret. Old reverse. Yes, you can. You can indeed. So we could, I see what you mean. You could actually take this triangle shape here. What we're creating is like a rectangle, but you could take that shape there and go out again and back in to uh, make a diamond shape. Yes, I see what you mean. Sorry, Margaret. <laughs> so there's my one side. And then I'm going to do the other side of my rectangle. So I've got a, I've got a rondelle and then I've got a crystal. Big crystal. I seem to be saying rondelle quite a lot. All right, and you can see if we just push those down, we've got that lovely shape again. And now we're going to go back in to a single toho here to pull these in. So all four strands go together again. Now the nice thing is the holes on these toho cubes are nice and big. So... And as that bunches down, you see we've got that lovely shape there. And I think as well, the sort of juxtaposition between the cubes and the faceted crystals are absolutely lovely. Um, question, what's your feelings? This is Jody. What's your feelings on making items on paper? or freehand or design board with measurements making your jewellery items noticing as a quilter design and measurements key to making blankets and so on what are your feelings on making items on paper or freehand or design so that, should that be design board with measurements making your jewellery items do you mean what are my feelings on making a pattern Jodie um because the way i the way i design my jewelry is is very similar to the way i design my quilts to be honest which is um the way i design my jewelry is often trial and error i'll have a vague idea um and then i'm actually working it through so when i design my quilts especially when i design my quilts for hampers and things by the time it becomes an actual pattern finished ready for somebody to take i probably made it four or five times i may make a block three or four times before i get the measurements right um and then eventually i will have all the pieces i'll make the quilt and then i make it again just to check that I've got the fabric requirements right. I do use a piece of software for my quilt designing that allows me to have a rough guide to how much things, how, how much uh, fabric these things take. But no software is um, a replacement for actually getting your hands on it and, and playing with it. So um, when I was designing this, as I said, the red one I started with uh, because I really wanted to play with these gorgeous red crystals. So I'm doing the same thing again now. I'm going to come back to here with my rondelles while I'm talking. So I'm going to do one side at a time. Um, and then start out on this square again. So it probably... I, I, I probably took it apart three or four times. I'd get this far and not like it. But the thing is, with the design process... Everybody is different, Jodie. Nobody can tell you that your method is right or wrong. You know, I'm not the quilt police. I'm not the beading police. You know, nobody can tell you the way you're doing something isn't the right way. Um, if, if you want to cut up pieces of fabric and lay them onto a board when you're quilt designing, then you do that. If you want to lay your beads out... Get your beads out and just look at them for a bit before inspiration comes. 
then uh, do that as well. Um, or just get in there, get a pile of beads and just start playing. It really is up to, to you as, as your own beading designer how you actually do it. I'm just trying to find the end. I need some more. Come on, girls. There we go. It's just, if you need to make something very quickly, like you've got a 10-minute job, I wouldn't suggest designing your own because it's going to end up taking you more than 10 minutes, especially with jewellery, because you don't know um, how flat it's going to lie or how it's going to hang, really, until you've made it. So as I said, I didn't use the rondelles at first. I had these squares and I had these faceted crystals, but without the rondelles, the, 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 the change from this to this was too big and it just didn't, it didn't lie flat and it twisted and it wasn't what I was aiming for. So um, I went back to my stash and found these little tiny crystals and went, ah, yep, yeah, that's exactly what I want to do. So I was planning to do, um, I've been playing with bugle beads um, and I was planning to do something with those, and I will over the next couple of weeks. But again, it um, the design process, it didn't quite come together in time. I'm still working through it. So there you go. There's our second one. Isn't that lovely? Oh, and Kitty's joined us as well. It says, good morning, everyone. Just finished packing away from the TV show. Good morning, Kitty, darling. I hope you are well. Thank you for joining us. So here we go. We're going to go back in. So we've come from our two rondelles. So we're repeating this bit. So we've got our two rondelles and we go straight back all four strands through that toho. And then just push them all tight. And we've got that nice little rectangle. So now we split them out again. And I'm going to do one side. So, rondelle, crystal, rondelle, toho. So, once you've got one side or one of these rectangles sorted, we're well, saying hello to Kitty. <laughs> Um, once you've got one side sorted, you're just repeating. Mm -hmm. Actually, this does look quite nice just on its own. You know, just uh, just doing the one side, but I wanted something. I wanted something with a little bit more substance. So you can see there. I think it's just a a little a little bit extra. So and then we'll do this other side. So sometimes the design process is kicked off by wanting to play with something and then other times it's kicked off by something you've seen or a colour combination that you've seen sort of outside or the fact was you know with me it was I wanted to play with some crystals but I also wanted to play with these gorgeous red crystals because you know it's Christmas. Jodie says, I really like listening and understanding others when they create. Everyone has their own way of making things. Good to know what's behind the creator's mind. It is interesting, but one, one lesson you do need to take from it, Jodie, is whatever, whatever floats your boat is your way. You know, um, I've done City and Guilds classes where they tell you, I've done City and Guilds in quilting and jewellery making. I did an NBQ in silversmithing. You know, I've done all of these courses and they tell you how to design. And the way they design is, you know, that that's their prescribed way. And I found it really difficult because um, 
it wasn't my way of designing. And the way I design is I often, you know, I'll, I, I, they would say, right, you come up with a theme and then you write about it and then you do lots and lots of tests. And uh, um, especially with quilting, you do lots and lots of tests. And then you come out with an idea and you, you know, you might make it 20 or 30 times before you do your final quilt or piece of jewellery. And that's really not... <laughs> how I work, mostly because I haven't got time um, to do it that way. So I had to kind of, you know, fake it. I would sort of have worked, at, especially with quilting, I work out a lot of the technique in my head. So I'll think, right, okay, well, I want to do diamonds, but how do I actually want to prepare those diamonds? And what size do I need the block to finish? Because what size is the quilt going to be? So I've worked all of that out in my head before I start sewing, and they didn't like it that way. So you do it your way, whatever way gives you the results that you actually want. And then other times, I have dreamt quilts, you know, just lie down. I go to bed, wake up, and the quilt is fully created in my head. So, oh, I need some more of the big crystals of the 8mm. There we go. Okay. So, big crystal. I'll do this last one, and then we'll put the hinge on the other end, because I don't think you... How many do I need to do? Two, four? Actually, I will do to the end, because then I'll have a third one to wear. I might as well. So, uh, are you going to do any more tree decorations? Looking mighty bare. <laughs> um, Jody, yes, I do have plans for more Christmas decorations. Is that because you can see the one behind me? Oh, I just kicked that, sorry. Um, let's just do the one behind me. Actually, the lights are off and everything at the moment. So I've got my um, garland, and there's another one down here. But I moved the tree and it fell off. But that's the garland we did a couple of weeks ago, the beaded garland. Um, so yes, I am planning to do another Christmas decoration uh, for you guys when the supplies arrive, which will hopefully be soon, um, using memory wire. So let's just go back to okay. so I'm just doing my fourth set now also crystals like this I will most likely be using these leftover bits of crystal for my Christmas decorations because they will twinkle like nobody's business. And I think that's absolutely the thing that you want to do with your Christmas decoration, don't you? You want a little twinkle. Oh, and if this happens and you've not gone through both of your beads, you just get you out the thread and go back through your wire, back through like that, it's no problem. Be kind of neat, see some kind of ice <laughs> sickles. Yep, I've got some, I have some plans. There are plans afoot for Christmas decorations, so do not worry. It is, it is odd because, um, well, not odd really, but I've been seeing Christmas decorations around where I live a lot earlier than I would traditionally see them. So, and I think that's because people really want to get festive this year for obvious reasons. All right, and then one more of those, and then we go back again through the four. So line up all those wires again. I will definitely have some beads left because this these don't use a huge amount. Um, obviously, the crystals, the large crystals, you know, I've used about yay much off my strand, but um, everything goes quite far when you're making bracelets. You, oh, there's nothing to stop you making this as well into a necklace. It would make a lovely necklace. 
So then I go back through all four, and then I'm going to do my final split. Right. And around each bead, we've got a little toe ho. Uh, sorry, we've got a little rondelle just to separate them. And as I said, all of these bits are available in different colours on the website and they're quite cost effective as well. So these will make nice gifts. And also if you are selling your stuff, you know, I think this bracelet looks quite, quite expensive, would you say? I think so with the crystals, but actually the time it takes to make, and the um one two three four five this is my last one the time it takes to make and the amount of beads you use is not an enormous outlay yeah i shouldn't have put hand cream on just before i did this <laughs> because everything's really slippery all right uh, so I need another rondelle after that, Toho. One more crystal off my strand. Maybe get hungry. S snack, popcorn or cranberries. I'm not quite sure I am. Do you, do you mean that sit and eat them while I'm making decorations? Jody. Right. Okie dokie. So this is my last single toe home. As I said, I've got diddy wrists, but you can make this any size you like. So we came in from a triangle into a single one, and now we're going to go from the single one out again. And at this point, it's a good idea to just push everything down your strand. So now I'm going to separate out again. Right. And then a toe hole on there. I just need some more of my rondelles. Right, so I've got a single, sorry, a double. Why are going through those? So you see our little triangle is getting wider. And now we're going to separate these out again into our four. The red rondelles really complement the other bees. They do, don't they? They add just that little bit of of colour. So this one, I use the metallic rondelles in there, the metallic hematite ones in between. So they're quite understated. And this one, I use the red with the red. But I think with this one, they really do pop. My watch just decided to talk to me then. That threw me for a moment. So I do apologise if you just heard a random little voice. Right, so I'm going to do a rondelle on the end of each. I'm going to do two sides first of all because it is easier if you do two at a time. All right, so now this is where we're going to get a little fiddly because this is where we're going to put the other end of the toggle. So Jody says, Yes, I'm from the North. We do popcorn or cranberries for tree chains. We put out after Christmas. Oh, I see. So you would thread your, your thread. Um, you would uh, thread your thread onto bits of dried cranberry and popcorn. That's quite a nice, that's a nice idea because it's recycling. So I need to just work out which way round I want my other toggle at the other end to go. And I also need those crimp beads back. 
So I crimp those on. And as I said, it's easier if you work from the middle outwards. Go back through that crimp bead. All right, now what we need to do is get this all the way down to the end here. So these bits are a little long because the tiger tail can be a little bit tricky to manipulate. But slide that all the way down. There we go. Because we want it nice and tight. Maybe go a little bit further. Is that a good pull? Right, get in there with my pinches and pinch that crimp. There we go. Now trim off that end. I do have to remember that that's magnetic as well because my cool tools keep um, keep sticking. And there's my covers. Uh, what have we got? say Cheryl says very pretty but you're working too close to the edge okie dokie I'll move in a little bit part of that is so that I can see what I'm doing <laughs> take my glasses off right so I've, I've crit but then I can't see if you're in focus hold on yes I think you're in focus there let's bring this up a little bit maybe Here we go. So, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Jody says I use natural floss for threading, so it's kind of natural. Yeah. And Sheila says I prefer to go direct. And did I see somebody say? I see somewhere. I think I'd have. Jean said, "I think I, I do think I. Oh, I've lost it. Hang on. I do think I would have allowed myself a little longer while to finish this end. Good luck, Sarah. Actually, if you if you leave it too long, it gets in the way. Okay, so it's it. You don't want it too long because it's it's trickier. I think these are probably about as long as I want them to be, because longer than that, it gets a little tricky to everything. Sort of flips back on itself. So let me grab my cover put that over and pinch everything nice and neat there we go and then the next one so I work from the middle outwards go through that loop and back through that crimp And then try and pull that as tight as I can. So it's easier if you pull it really tight before you pull this strand. Because once you pull that strand tight in there, you're kind of fixed to your position. So if I bend it like that and then pull, you see that will keep it nice and tight. Tuck that out of the way. You see these long strands are now getting in my way, which is a little awkward get my crimp cover that one's got a crimp bead stuck in it so i won't bother with that one take the crimp bead out in a second pinch that my cover over the top The, this is the trick to it is to get it quite tight but then getting it tight makes it more tricky to get in there and pinch your crimp actually before I do that I need to trim that tail off there we go I'm going to oh take that 
that out for a second. I've got a cable that's getting in my way on my phone, so I've just unplugged it. I'm not going to run out of battery now. So sometimes these things are fiddly, but they're worth taking, investing the time in to get it neat. There we go. And then this side, I'm going to go through, I need one Toho. Separate those out. One crimp. And again, do the middle one out. Pull that nice and tight. And go back in through. Pull it. Pull. Trim. Give another cover. pinch it from the other side because I want that to cover I've actually got a little bit of my wire sticking out there so I want to cut that off because that would scratch my skin and that would really irritate me so then finally we've got the final rondelle and then I've got another crimp cover pull it tight Yeah, don't use hand cream. It's been slipping out my fingers. Pull that nice and tight there. Pinch. Trip. Oh, wrong pliers. Again, people find their own different techniques, their own way of holding things. Which pliers you like to use for which job. And there we go. So now what I've got to do is just slide those around. So put my glasses back on so I can see you. Um, let's have a look. The icicles. Are those clamshell crimp covers you are using? These are the round ones. I The ones I usually use have the catch on them. But um, actually, if the, I'm not sure whether these are called clamshell. Clamshell. But they, they do look like a clamshell. They're round. And you pinch them. So, I just, hang on. I'm just... No, uh, just go back to the questions because obviously when I take my glasses off, I can't see this far to read the comments. The icicles. Well, hang on, what have we got? Are we talking about icicles? Looking forward to it. Um, does it help to use pliers with a smaller head? Now, that's a good question, Anne. Um, sometimes it is, but I find picking up those crimp covers much easier with a bigger head. It just makes it, it tricky to go to go in. So trying to control them with my round nose, which are tiny, I found really difficult. Um, the other pliers that I have, the flat nose ones, they're all quite, quite
quite chunky. So if you've got some narrower pliers. Um, she, I was going to say, there's also um, a crimping tool, but Sheila just says, I have a crimping tool, which is great for applying crimps and crimp covers. Yeah, so it's a lot often it's about the tools. Have you tried two or one? Oh, hang on. Miss Jody, have you tried two or one magnetic ring clasp or the three ring better? Some, some might have clasp at home. Yes, now um, I've got a bag here. I have ones with three and ones with five in they are fabulous too but we're using four strands on this piece so i needed one with four holes because i'm using four strands if i was using the five one i would need to have done a different design because i needed an even number of strands to be able to to do that so uh joe says sorry i've missed this i'm back on my nail desk today yeah you just had my first client well hello joe nice to hear you can get back to work um Sheila says they're called crimp covers. Yeah, I don't know if they're called clamshell crimp covers, but um, mm, 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 mm. but here we go. So we just bring that around now, and you see that's going to slide in there like that. And then this will sit neatly on my wrist. Oh, I she knows. So when I put this on, again, trying to do things for TV for filming purposes. Don't know if you can see that, but that will just slide, she says. Having been able to do it, oh, move my beads out of the way. I think somebody earlier said they use their teeth. I'll just just got to line those pieces up. Oh, come on. You know when you're just having one of those days? Thing is, what you've got is you've got a groove here that fits like that. So it's just trying to get that to work for the camera. <laughs> oh, I should just go and bury myself today. Come on, there we go. If this wasn't live, <laughs> I did it that time. <laughs> oh, dear, we go. But there we go. So I've got my little bracelet on here. So, um, Joe says, I'd love one of those. I thought what I bought was a crimping tool, but can't figure out how to use it. And Jody says, well, Sarah, thanks for answering questions. Have a great day. And you guys too, thank you very much for joining me. As I said, this is the Maisie bracelet. So um, it, it sits quite like a bangle because it doesn't twist. Um, but you can make it as a necklace as well. Um, and Lorna says, a repeat pattern of your first triangle of beads. Yes. So with this one, we came in from four to two to two to one. And then you could go out again and then back in and just repeat this without the big crystals. And that would be lovely too. So that would be a variation. And that's the thing. When you start playing with designs and you start playing with a pile of beads, you can use your imagination and change the way that things look you know you can make something uh like lorna said this is now this is one bracelet but we've just had an idea on how to create another one because lorna suggested this bit repeats and there you go straight away you could sit and make a second bracelet that looks completely different but it's come from that section of the first one so that's the design um the design process really it's about trying and then sometimes you try something it doesn't work right now but keep it in your head or scribble it down on a piece of paper what you actually used um, or take a photograph of it with your phone because it might spark something else off later um, and help you create a, a new design that's completely you know often with crafts you cross pollinate 
and the same with beading you'll have an idea over here and then you have another idea over here and then you bring them together and you've got something completely unique and that's what i love about crafting it's what i love about sewing and it's what i love about beading that you can just create a unique piece of art just from your own head um, and your own hands i think that's really amazing and especially right now something like this it's easily postable um you know as a gift i mean if i was to receive a piece of jewelry like this bagged up in the post i would be absolutely thrilled it would be lovely wouldn't it and you can sit there and make a big pile of them so um also as usual if you want to take one of my designs like this one and make to sell then please do fill your boots so um we've been here over an hour now so thank you very much again for joining me um and i will see you next week um with a new uh, little demonstration here and um i hope you have a lovely weekend uh, stay safe uh, stay warm and uh keep crafting and thank you sheila i will enjoy the rest of my day i have a very busy one so i'm off to do some sewing now i've got some curtains to finish <laughs> But sometimes these practical things have to be done, don't they? Anyway, you have a great weekend, everybody. And I will see you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.